Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and it is JavaScript Tuesday. Tuesday is the day we look at the language itself. We put away all that other stuff, try and figure out how JavaScript works. And we'll come back to that in a second, but I've got on the screen here an array. And tell me this hasn't happened to you, because it seems to happen to me all the time, where I've got a, an array that has come from a database, maybe, or an API, or some other source, and it's got objects in it. We've got name, address, and password in this first one, just name and password in this one. And so what I'm going to do, or what I need to do, we'll do a users.foreach, we'll call the one we're on you. And let's say we wanted to do something with the, the address.city. So we're gonna grab the city of each user, print it out, or, or parse it, or whatever. And if we hop over and I refresh the browser, we get a type error. It says, cannot read properties of undefined. It was looking at city on line 19. So back over here, it tried uh, to, to get the city property off of this, which was undefined. Well, back over here, if we scroll up a little bit, it got the first one, Atlanta. And that, of course, is because this first object has an address and has a city. Even if it didn't have a city, we wouldn't have gotten an error. We just would have gotten undefined or null. But because we have no address here, this is trying to run on something that doesn't exist, and you can't do that in JavaScript. Well, what we would do historically, or at least what I would do, I'll comment that out, and I'll put will break, uh, drop this back in. I would do something like this, where I would look to see, does u.address exist? And if it does, then we'll grab u.address.city, otherwise we'll just print off the empty string. This will work just fine. Uh, this is actually kind of idiomatic, meaning this is common in JavaScript. You're used to seeing that. We've got the empty string there now. It didn't break. The problem with this is that it can get really verbose. We can, we can end up with some serious logic that you know really is doing nothing more than just determining is this thing, uh, is, does, is this thing not null or undefined? So what we can do now as an alternative is console.log. We're kind of doing this same, the same idea, this ternary. We're going to do u.address.city. It's the same thing we have on line 19 here. But we're going to grab this question mark and we're going to drop it in front of our property name. So it's going to look like that. And what this is going to do is exactly the same thing as what we did here. Check to see if this exists. And if it does, then go ahead Oh, with with the, whatever the property is. If it doesn't, then just drop undefined. So if we refresh, right, we get Atlanta because that does exist. For the second one, we get undefined back. This is a really awesome feature in ES 11 or ECMAScript uh, 2020. This is called the optional chain operator. Okay, and I'm gonna follow it up here before we look at the docs. Another thing you might want to do is an if statement. Again, this is something that happens to me a lot where I want to check to see if u.address.city equals, uh, we'll say Atlanta. And it does for that first object. We'll console.log, hello, Atlanta user, right? Whatever needs to happen in this case, okay? Hop back over, it's going to break. Exact same reason. There is no city on undefined. Why is there undefined? Well, this second object doesn't have that property. What I would normally do in this case is I would check to see if u.address and then I would have two ampersands. So it's going to check this first and if that's not true, it's going to ignore the rest uh, of the statement. So we save that, hop over here, refresh, and it works just fine. Line 24 printed off inside of our, our for each and then it skipped it in that second one. Again, this is really verbose, and it can get really ugly if, if you're checking for something really significant. And there's a little caveat here with if statements. We'll come back to that in just a second. But I'm going to make this even worse. <laughs> At least it's worse in my opinion. You might have nested if statements like this. And this is painful to look at because the only purpose line 23 there serves uh, is, is to check to see if this thing exists so that we can check to see uh, if this thing exists. <laughs> um, it's just, it's brutal. And we can undo all of this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually comment this out because, again, we're going to come back to that in just a second. going to drop it in again. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this. De-indent this and drop in there a question mark dot city. And if this is undefined or null, then this is not going to evaluate. Line 24 won't run. We refresh our code. We get exactly the same thing. Okay, let's hop over to the docs, uh, MDN here. Again, this is ES 2020 uh, or, or ES 11. 
This is our syntax, question mark, dot. This thing accesses an object's property or calls a function. Okay, we'll talk about functions in a minute. But if the thing accessed is undefined or null, the expression will short circuit and evaluate to undefined instead of throwing an error. Okay, so back over here, let's throw a note in there quick. Uh, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna actually bring this up here. The optional chain operator is awesome. <laughs> it will keep our code from breaking by short circuiting if the thing it's on is nullish. Okay, we're gonna come back over and I'm gonna show you nullish is a JavaScript concept that means null or undefined, okay? That is different than falsy. So I'm gonna click on this. Falsy, if we scroll down here, is null and undefined, but is also the Boolean false, not a number, zero, negative zero, zero, and the big ant, the empty string, and then document.all. So this stuff is falsy. So back over here in our if statement, if you need to check to see if it's true or like if it's not falsy, I guess I should say, this is different, right? That, that would be different code. And I, I'll put that comment in there. Checks for falsy, not nullish. The, uh, the optional chain operator is checking to see just two things. Is it null or is it, is it undefined? And I'll put that in comments here, null or undefined. And it will short circuit uh, if it is, and not not throw the uh, not throw the air. Okay, scroll down a little bit. They give us the syntax. We can run it on properties, which you've seen. We can run it against bracket notation. So this is useful uh, for uh, for an indice. So back over here, uh, if we were to try this inside of our our U loop, we were to try and go to U dot array and grab index one. Okay, this doesn't exist, right? Array does not exist. We refresh our code, right? I don't know what you're talking about. We can throw in there uh, question mark dot, and again it will short circuit because that doesn't uh, that doesn't exist. That array is undefined. Back over to the docs, it works on function calls. So back over here again, we do u dot let's say get name open close. That's gonna break because undefined is not a function. That's exactly what u dot uh, get name is. It is undefined. So we drop in before we call the function, and I'll make that note, before the open close, before we call the function, it'll check to see if this thing is, is, is it nullish. If it is, stop, <laughs> okay? Come back over, refresh, get name does not fail. Back over to the docs here, we'll pass over this because we've talked about all of that stuff. Get down to uh, function calls, one thing to note, um, is that if there is a property with that name, it will not save you. Okay, so we come back over here and we do password. It's not checking to see if password is a function. It's checking to see if password is not null or not defined. So line 29 is gonna break because password's not a function. It does exist, it happens to be a string. So I have a kind of a broken record here. This is checking to see if this is not null uh, or, or if it's not undefined. So we'll go back to where we were and I'll drop that in there. If you dot password question mark dot will break because password is not nullish. Okay, that is the point uh, of, this, of this operator. We keep going down a little bit further. Um, we, we talked about expressions already. This is, uh, they've got an example here with the, the array is not defined. You cannot define something, meaning what you're trying to do here is overwrite it. So it doesn't work on the left side of an equal sign. Object question mark meaning, is this not nullish? If it is, then overwrite the property with one. You, you cannot do that. It doesn't work because of how assignments are done. We talked about uh, the short circuiting part already. You can look a little bit closer at that. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you is if we keep going here, we can stack the, the chain. So um, if we were to come back up here and we wanted to find, uh, say, state, uh, we're looking for state on address. If that exists, we want to do something with it. Well, let's come down below here and let's drop in here. We'll do u dot address dot state and let's try and grab the first character. Okay, let's say we wanted to do that. We'll console.log this. Okay, this is going to break for both of them. Refresh because we have null, 
right here. State is null. So that's problem number one. Well, problem number two, we didn't even get there. It's not going to work here because address doesn't exist. So we can drop in a question mark here before we try and access address. And then we can drop a question mark dot in here before we try and access the array. And we get undefined for those short circuits our code. So again, you can chain these together, which is really powerful because instead of doing does you dot address exist and then checking does dot state exists, um, I've had, I've been in situations where I had six properties deep that I needed to check to make sure every single one existed because the data was goofy. And in, in that case, we would just have to chain this six times. It would look so much cleaner. Combining it with the nullish coalescing operator is actually one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite things to do with it. It's really powerful together. I have not made a video on this yet, so you might be ahead of the game depending on when you're watching. But the two question marks, um, all that means is that the thing on the right will only run and be assigned if the thing on the left is nullish. So you've got two nullish things going on here. Uh, in their example, it's a function with a variable coming in. So it's declared. Let's hop over. Our example is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, let's make a variable, call it city. And we're going to assign that to u dot address, but we need to make sure address exists before we try and grab city. And then we've got two question marks and we'll put unknown city. So what this is going to do, it's going to first of all check to make sure that u dot address uh, is not nullish. And if it is nullish, then it's going to assign it to this. Okay, if it got past this, then it's going to check to see this part's going to check to see if this is nullish. And if it is, then it's going to use this. If neither one of those is true, then it will use the, the city. <laughs> so this is a lengthy way of saying, don't check the city uh, property if if this is nullish, because that would that would break and go ahead and assign it to this. Uh, if there is an address, then check to see if city exists. If it's not nullish, then use it. If it is nullish, then use this. So if we drop right after this uh, console.log city and run our uh, rerun our browser, we get unknown city for the first one because it doesn't even have an address and we get Atlanta for the second one. If we come back up to the top here and, and change city here to null so that it, it is nullish and this this has more to do with the other operator, but we get unknown city for both of them. Uh, I'm going to switch that back here quick again because this is going to check uh, to see if this on, on this side is nullish, if it is use unknown city. Why would it be nullish? Well, because city didn't was nullish or because there wasn't even uh, an, an address that was nullish. Okay, really powerful. Uh, I suggest using it a lot because you'll find yourself uh, wanting to use it all the time. It's got great base support back to node for, uh, 14 and you can see the browsers here. Uh, I'll link uh, another video from JavaScript Tuesdays. I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.